Welcome to the John Neighbors Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate each and every one of you listening in and watching in on this beautiful day. I am your host, John Neighbors, and appreciate each and every one of you for making us a part of your afternoon this afternoon, as it is a Monday. So we're going to react to everything that happened over the sports weekend here on this Monday and have plenty of Razorback things to talk about because not only is there some basketball, but some baseball and some football and Plenty of things to cover, and uh, we're going to have all the headlines, too. Talk a little bit about the NCAA tournament, Final Fours being set. I'd rather die than talk about it, but I know that it is something worth noting that a lot of you are interested in and interested in hearing from, so we'll get to some of that. And, of course, get to all of your messages here on the live stream, so if you want to get in on the chat, be sure to do so. And also, don't forget to call in, folks. We do have a phone line. We uh, do have something that uh, is, is experimental, but it is pretty fun. And all you got to do is dial 936-24-NATTY or 936-246-2889. You dial that number, it asks you for a prompt of giving you your name, where you're calling from, all that good stuff, and then we'll try to get you on. So if you want to get involved in the conversation and on the show that way, by all means, be sure to do that too. But a uh, great show planned out for you, just like every show that we always do, of course. Um, and we'll talk about baseball because I know that that's definitely a positive from the weekend for Razorback fans. And even on basketball, you had a positive that uh, Curtis Wilkerson and Scotty Borland did a great job live streaming, pushed back my show a little bit on Friday, but that's okay. Uh, as Josh Cohen was committing to the Razorback. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into that and talk about it. But I wanted to open up the show today to talk about Razorback football. Um, for those of you who may have had a chance to check out uh, Pot of That Nature, which I still love that name, uh, and also our, our recap at NightStateSports.com from Saturday's scrimmage, one of my favorite things that went down after that was the, uh, the Bobby Petrino experiment that continues on, continues to go, and continues to interest me, especially, of how this team and the expectation that they have is going to look. I am one of those people who firmly believe in Bobby Petrino that he can turn this thing around and get it going in a great way and have the offense really cooking. And also, I look at what Petrino has done in his history as an offensive coordinator to base that on. And even in the practices, in the scrimmages, in the drills, and everything that we've seen so far in spring, I think that the offense is set. I, I've said that many times. The Quarterback situation is set as far as who's going to be your first teamer. Your running back situation is set. Your offensive line situation is set. Wide receivers, tight ends. All of that's been set. And the defense is certainly going to be interesting. They have some D linemen that are really going to return and make a splash and be highly talented. I think the defensive secondary is the same way. The linebacker is, sheesh, looks a little thin out there. But still, it's just been about all the offense, 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 offense. So the question that I am posing to many of you, and that's why the name of today's show happens to be the simple question. Are we putting too much pressure on the Bobby Petrino experiment at Arkansas? Are we putting too much pressure on him and his offense and his success in order to base the entire season on him 
and the offense. Because I believe that this team is going to be better than 4-8. and eight. Uh, Once we get closer to the season and it actually starts up, I'm sure I'll give more of other predictions. SEC Media Days in mid-July is when the predicted order of finish will be released. And I'm just going to be honest, folks, since you have divisions given, there's no more divisions. Uh, you have 16 teams. And I would put the over under on where Arkansas ranks in the SEC at 14 and a half. And I think it's going to be the over. I think that they're going to be picked either second to last or at best third to last in this conference next season. Just being honest. I think they'll be above Vanderbilt and possibly above Mississippi State. Maybe. But that's pretty much it. That's okay. Who cares? It's, pre- it's preseason predicted order of finish. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, in basketball, the, the media picked South Carolina to finish dead last out of 14 teams, and they ended up having one of the best seasons that they've ever had, but also having a great year to get into the NCAA tournament. So predictions during the preseason don't mean a whole lot, especially from us media members, because for most of us are jackholes that have no idea what we're talking about, but we sure like to pretend it. But the thing is, is that anywhere that you as a Razorback fan, when you start thinking about the expectation that comes along with it, You're going to listen to people like me, for whatever reason, as well as read some of the practice reports that we do at Natty State Sports. You'll be piecing it all together. You'll be hearing about, oh, man, what looks really good. You'll see some highlights that either the University of Arkansas posts on their social media account or that we post out on our YouTube page that we do each and every practice. We'll have another one tomorrow morning. And you'll start to see that, and you'll start to envision, and you're like, man, man, this particular player looks good. This particular player looks great. This, this uh, side of the ball or this unit looks like it's really going to be improved, and you're going to work yourself up into a frenzy where you're like, you know what? I, I was going to say five, six wins tops uh, before the season started, but now I'm thinking 10 wins is in, is in the scope. Like it's just, it's just how fans be, and this is how they are. But we all know about Bobby Petrino and what he can be capable of as the head coach, as the offense coordinator because of what we saw of him as a head coach. But since his first year and being at Arkansas he's and, and having a new quarterback, essentially new running backs, uh, new wide receivers for him, like, everything's new to him. These are the players that he's been given. Now, I know for the sake of a Jalen Tate, uh, not Jalen Tate, I always want to call him Jalen Tate, Taylor Green. Uh, but for somebody like him, he has been Bobby Petrino's target pretty much since he's even been at Boise State. And that's what really helps is knowing that Petrino got his guy, got his QB, the one that he wants on this roster. And supplementing him and backing him up are also some really good, highly talented, or at least highly touted quarterbacks. You know, I'm just going to be honest with you folks. I would be surprised if Jacoby Criswell stays on the roster. Uh, I think that in this day and age, it just makes sense for someone in his position to move on because, you know, he's in, he's the later part of his career. He wants to be a starter. He wants to play somewhere. And unless an injury happens to Taylor green, it's not going to happen. So he may move on. It wouldn't surprise me, but even then, if you have Malachi Singleton, or if you have uh, KJ Jackson, you, you got some serviceable athletic and some highly, again, highly touted quarterbacks that are going to be there in that position. So that's the most important part. And they got it. But the rest of this team has essentially been guys that Petrino didn't handpick or didn't even recruit in some aspects. These wide receivers all came from the previous year, and they obviously like what Petrino does in that offensive system to be able to get them the ball. The tight end's kind of the same way. They're from last year, but I think not only are they, they love to play for Arkansas, but knowing what Bobby Petrino has done with tight ends, guys like DJ Williams and Chris Gregg, just for instance, Shows that, man, if I in that position, I can really be featured a lot and have a lot of success. And offensive line, no, I don't know how much Petrino had involved in, involved in that. A lot of it was Mateo, so I'm sure a lot of it was Pittman. And then in the running backs, you, you had a, a coaching change in the middle of spring, and Petrino brings in his guy. So I guess he did have a say in, in the coaches of what they hired. But the point is, is that this is going to be a new experiment for Bobby. Second year as an offensive coordinator after being a head coach for over 20 years going back to Arkansas, knowing what they're up against, knowing the situation to where 
when Petrino was at Texas A&M last year, everyone kind of knew that hey, Jimbo is do or die, but no one was going to really look at Petrino and say, well, the, what, how, the reason why Jimbo Fisher failed at A&M was because he hired Bobby Petrino. No, he was not going to be the scapegoat. In fact, most people would probably have loved to have seen him be the interim coach after Jimbo Fisher was hired in the middle of the season, but that didn't happen. But now it's a different deal with Sam Pittman. It's similar in the way that he is a do or die type of coach right now going into this season. Like this is make it or break it. Like you're going to be in you're going to be in bad shape if you don't get something going, something next level here very soon. So he's in the same position that way. But because of the keys to the offensive vehicle that Pittman has handed over to Petrino, where he gets to select the quarterback, deal with the offense, and also have two now assistant coaches with Fouch and Smith at running at wide receivers and running backs, respectively, as part of the offensive system, this is exactly what can happen to set up Bobby Petrino for said success. He can be successful at a place like Arkansas, given these circumstances. But knowing that this is it, you get one year if you're Sam Pittman, and knowing the schedule that you have in front of you, I mean, you're playing in the SEC, it's already tough as it is, but your second week of the season, you're playing in Stillwater. In fact, you don't play your first Fayetteville home game until the third week of the season, which is a whole other thing that we could talk about. But you got a tough schedule in front of you. You got a defense that was improved last year but lost some key pieces, especially at linebacker, which may not be as good as it was last year, may not be in a position to keep you in games as much as it was last year. And if you don't have an offense that is explosive and can make plays, it's over with. Like You're not going to be a team that is competing for anything at the next level. Like You're just not. So going back to the original question of do you, do we, do we feel like the pressure is too much on Bobby Petrono and the offense to dictate the success of the Razorback football team? The answer is no, because that is it. You had a decent defense, an average defense last year. Maybe slightly better. It was improved. And they kept you in games, but you went four and eight last year. You have to be able to have an offense that puts points up on the board, of course, but also have an offense that does not make the same mistakes that Arkansas's offense made last year. And I'm talking about the amount of times it's fourth down and short and they go for it and they don't get it. And everyone's screaming at their TV, why are you on fourth and short or even third and short, running in shotgun instead of just letting your six foot four, 258 pound quarterback do the push push and you get the first down. That never happened until it finally did. And guess what happened? A first down was made, but it was too little too late. Like those are the types of things that this offense needs to avoid. Are they going to put up 38 points a game? Geez, I hope so, but it would be pretty tough for them to do that given the schedule. But can they just in the red zone? get into the end zone more often than having to settle for field goals. Can they, on short yardage situation, be able to get the first down, be physical enough up front, and get the first down? I don't care if it's with the quarterback, the running back, the, the tight end, like whoever. But do you have an offense that's confident enough and powerful enough and strong enough to be able to do the simple things that offenses need to do to be effective? You're not going to be perfect. Arkansas is going to throw interceptions. They're going to fumble the ball. They're going to turn it over. They're going to have penalties. Can you limit all of those things enough to be able to be an effective offense? And if you do, if you're able to do that, as simple as it may sound, if you're able to do that, then the offense is going to carry this team to a successful season. Maybe I'm looking at it too simplistic. I don't think I am. It makes sense to me. I think it makes sense to you. And that's really the bottom line, to quote uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. But it's true. That's what we're uh, that's what we're discussing today is about the offense and about the expectation. So if you want in on the conversation, folks, again, get in the chat as uh, we are live here from the United States Sports Studios. You can also call in at 936-246-2889, and uh, we'll have uh, your thoughts and opinions there if you want to do uh, via the phone lines and everything. But uh, in the chat, though, as far as our comments about Petrino and everything, uh, Adam comes in and says, uh, I think the D will be as good as last year. 
in year two, even with the linebacker issue. Well, Adam, I hope you're right. Um, they do have some D line that you can be excited about and you can feel good about, but there's still only so much that the D line can do. And I, I mean, again, I love Landon Jackson. I love Cam Ball. You know, can we get something out of the, some of these newcomers and somebody uh, step into that position? Maybe, but I don't know. I'm 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 hopeful, but I'm not certain. Uh, J Rod says the problem is people are putting loving the Petrino hire, but they are not giving credit for Pittman making the hire. Well, I don't I don't know how many people are are doing that, and if they are, that's kind of naive and. I wouldn't call it dumb, but it's just, it's not ideal because you have Sam Pittman who had to make a choice and he made the choice to fire Danny Nose and he admits that that was not the right move. And he made the hire of Petrino and that just changed everyone's mentality. I, I remember vividly, folks, um, and I don't know if maybe some of you actually listen or watch to uh, my Locked On Razor X podcast, but I remember doing that after Sam Pittman's comments in the Missouri game, after Arkansas got trounced uh, by our lesser university. But he's kind of just cocked an attitude a little bit. Uh, I think a reporter asked him a question of, you know, uh, how are you going to, like, how do you get, garner some momentum, some good vibes, some good feeling of, especially in recruiting, to be able to excite people that you're, got, you're, you're the guy for the job and you're going to get it done next year. And I remember Sam Pittman goes, I don't know, next question. And I ripped him for it because I was like, I, that's not what you say in that situation. What you say is that I'll tell you I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out and I'm going to hire the best offensive coordinator and I'm going to go into the port and we're going to get the best players and you know we're going to make this right. We're going to right the ship and we're going to go crazy with it and really do some great stuff here this offseason. That's what you should have said. And I was, I was done. I was done with Pittman at the time. I'll be fully transparent. I was over it. I was not thrilled. I was not feeling good. And if he was going to stay on as head coach, I was like, man, you better do something crazy. Like hire like a Cliff Kingsbury. I think that was even what I said. Hire a Cliff Kingsbury as OC. And the reason I said that is because it didn't even come through. It didn't even compute into my mind that Bobby Petrino was an option until Brandon Marcello of 24-7 Sports put out a tweet that it was like they're currently vetting Bobby Petrino for the offensive coordinator position. I'm like, no, no, no way, no way. And then shortly thereafter, boom, Bobby Petrino's the OC. There is not a single coordinator, single coach that you could have hired that would have excited the fan base like Bobby Petrino excited this Razorback fan base. I don't know how it's going to go as far as his offense and the numbers it's going to put up. I don't know if it's going to be a process. I don't know how Pittman feels about the current situation and the processes that they're going through. I have no idea because all we've had is spring practices and scrimmages. But what I do know is that Sam Pittman, for all of his faults, I like the guy personally. I think he's a much better coach than people give him. don't give him credit for I think that he does have flaws since he hasn't been a head coach. I think he's learned a lot. And I think that he understands the pressure that's on him here. But for all those faults and for all those flaws that he may have, folks, he still did that. He still hired Bobby Petrino, a guy that seemed completely and totally like untouchable at this place, damaged goods for what happened just in, over a decade ago, which – Man, doesn't this feel familiar being April 1st? Because 12 years ago today is when it happened. But the, the feeling of that, the feeling of how this full circle thing has happened, Pittman knew the history. Like he knew, it's not like he was just like, oh, I don't remember Bobby Petrino as the coach of Arkansas and what happened. No, he knew. He knew. He knew. Hunter Yurichek knew. The board knew. Boost. Everybody knows. What happened? And they still made the hire anyways. Why? Did they make the hire because no one else wanted the job? I mean, maybe you could convince yourself of that. But they hired the man because he's really good at what he does. And he's been really good at everywhere he's been. And I think Juracek, also with all of his faults, understood 
that if I made this hire with Bobby Trino and I brought him back, the prodigal son, home to Arkansas, it would change the attitude and the vibes and the mindset of so many Razorback fans and the, their current attitude towards the Razorback football program. And it did. It did. So give credit where credit is due. Bobby Petrino in that hire by Sam Pittman has reignited all of the excitement that Razorback fans can have right now, too. Uh, random stuff says, say Sam doesn't get it done again, but the offense does show a lot of promise. Would you and could Arkansas take Bobby as head coach again? Oh, jeez. I This scenario I've been asked so many times about, and... And I don't like to look at it that way because I want the season to be good. You know, I, I don't want this year to be disappointing. Like, and I'm not saying you do random stuff, but I want it to be fun. I want us all to have fun this year and Sam Pittman not getting it done, but the offense making steps and, and strides kind of con contradicts the, the whole point that I was making in this show is I don't think because here's the thing. If the offense works this year, it's going to be a good year. When I say good, I'm talking about going to postseason again, a bowl game, at least. If the offense is good. If it's not good, this team's going to have a losing record. Plain and simple. So, Bobby Petrino is going to be the core and key ingredient into the recipe of this success. So, but to answer your question, since we're playing in, in that what-if game, uh, no. No. I, I don't I don't know if I well here's the thing. Let me rephrase it. I don't know if I would want him as head coach again. Cause it's so different now, folks. With the NIL and transfer portal, you you are already having to kiss some rear ends to get recruiting done 10 years ago. Now it is absurd trying to get guys out of the portal and in here and keeping everyone happy. So un, unless something changes, uh, I, I don't see that part of it changing. So the answer to your question, I I'm not saying I'd be against it. But I'm also not saying I'm all for it because I just don't know how a head coach, Bobby Petrino, at a major SEC university would function inside of the current state of transfer portal and NIL. I just, I just don't know how well that would work. So uh, just my thought on it. I'm hopeful. I am hopeful because I do love Bobby Petrino. There was not a more exciting person, excited person in this country than me when Bobby Petrino made his return, like when they announced he was hired, I, I got those goosebumps all over again. And I started thinking about all those highlights and all those great plays and great games and great teams that he had going 21 and five in two seasons. Like folks, do you know how long it took Arkansas to get to 21 wins since he's been gone? <laughs> like if you really do the math there, Oh, I think it took him. Let's see. It took his three wins. It was four and then three. So seven. And then another seven, that's 14. And then another seven, so that's 21. So you're talking about four seasons? It took four years to get to the point. Double the time for Arkansas to win the same amount of games that Bobby Trino did in two years. And that was during Arkansas's good seasons, mind you. Like that was during uh, Bielma's 14 and 15 campaign. That was his best years. And shoot, if you go pre-Pittman or even... Since, I mean, you think about the two wins and, or the, was it the four wins, the two wins, the two wins, eight wins. Pippen had three, that was 11. Then he had nine, that was 20. That's six years since they could even get to that point. So you're talking about a completely and totally different animal and element. Um, but I love Bobby Petrino. I always have loved Bobby Petrino. I am one of the few nut jobs, and I'm sure you all disagree with me. I don't think he should have been fired. I'm just saying. I am just saying. I don't think he should have been fired. You should have found a way. Does that make me a terrible human being? Maybe. But numbers don't lie. And I think everybody, looking back upon what has been since Bobby Petrino, you wouldn't have taken it either. You wouldn't have taken it either. J-Rod says the SEC was loaded those Bielma years, especially in the West. Yeah, but guys, the, the SEC during the Petrino years was even better. I know that you added A&M in Missouri, but think about the SEC and Pet with Petrino in 2011. Just look at the West. Les Miles, who won a national championship and played in another one, coached in another one. Nick Saban, I heard he was pretty good. 
Uh, you had Dan Mullen at Mississippi State, who was phenomenal there. You had Gene Chizik at Auburn, which, yeah, was he the greatest coach? No, but he won a national championship during that span and had Cam Newton. So that's pretty good. And then you had Houston Nutt at Ole Miss, which is hilarious. But then look at the East. Urban Meyer at Florida. I heard he was pretty good. What about Steve Spurrier at South Carolina? Yeah, he was pretty good too. That was like, what, three straight seasons of 11 wins? Think about Mark Richt at Georgia. Wasn't the best coach ever, but constantly having nine to 10 wins every year. You had James Franklin at Vanderbilt, folks. Like Vanderbilt was a good team back then. But James Franklin. And Mark Stoops, maybe, no, I think that was Joker Phillips. When, so Kentucky wasn't relevant and Tennessee wasn't relevant because of Derek Dewey. But the point is, is that you had a lot of talent and a lot of great teams during that span too. So uh, just remember that. But things have changed. The SEC is now going to have 16 teams and Texas and Oklahoma join the conference and you're going to have a tough schedule here. But hey, listen, I love football. It is spring football. We'll have to talk about some of the great things that happened over the weekend, of course, in baseball side of things too. But before we do, let's talk about Signature Bank. It's banking redefined because they are a privately held boutique bank that is redefining the banking experience in our entire region here in the state of Arkansas, which they blend the warmth and familiarity of a community bank with the sophistication of a commercial bank and the expertise of a private banking to deliver unmatched levels of service. They're personally invested in you and they're business minded and community focused. You know, when you talk about doing banking, whether it's your personal or business banking, a lot of times you just forget about it. You're just like, oh, I've been banking there forever, so I'm never going to change it. Or, oh, I like this place because, uh, you know, I like the way my debit card looks. But when you start to really take it seriously, which every one of us should, because banking with our money, we want to make sure we're doing it with the right people. And when we go into a bank to have a loan take place or opening up a business, you want to have the right place managing, taking care of you with the right people. That's always going to make sure that you get what you need, and that's what Signature Bank does for you. So they have locations all across the state of Arkansas, but you can also check them out online at Signature.Bank. That's www.Signature.Bank. No matter what it is when it comes to your banking needs, be sure to do it with Signature Bank here in Arkansas, the official bank of us here at Natty State Sports. We will take a break. When we come back, we'll get to more of the show, more of your comments, more of your phone calls and all that fun stuff. Coming up next, so stay with us. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. I mean, honestly, I don't really remember post game. I guess I black out after games, winning and losing. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Just tell me you missed it. I'm not going to go with you today. Why not? And that will be the last question I answer with that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shoot. That is why Arkansas is fantastic. Yes, sir. You know, and, and I like, you know, I didn't like the game, but I'm glad I was able to walk off the floor again and deep inside and have that funny feeling that, hey, one more time, Horn. Best guys, uh, I know it's a tough time for you. Uh, the coach is gone, but... You got a new coach now, and you got to listen to what he says. Okay, I know you're thinking, oh, who is this new guy? Where's the other guy that crashed the motorcycle? We like him better. He was cool or whatever. Forget about all that. Listen to the new coach and get out there and win some games. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. You guys act like it's... Pick it up a little bit. Okay? Get your chin up. Smile. Smile! Okay? Dang, you guys all right? If not, I'm not talking! I'm so excited! Big Red! Oh! Oh! Guys, I've got just one thing I want to say to you. Touchdown, Arkansas! I was a teacher today. Told those boys. Welcome to the SEC. Fayetteville is 1,843 miles away, but the call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco. Let's dig my dick in the mashed potato. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbors Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios. 
All right, welcome back into the John Neighbors Show. Appreciate everybody listening in, watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. As we've had a lot of fun, plenty of fun to be had here today uh, so far on the show, and we'll get to some of your comments too as the show goes on. Because uh, some of the comments I try to read, and I, I can't, uh, just because I, I want to like read the funny ones, especially, but I can't. I just don't have the strength, don't have the curiosity from it all. But still. Um, it was a great weekend, though, especially if you're a Razorback baseball fan. How about that? The Razorback baseball team taking care of business and winning in thrilling fashion over the LSU Tigers uh, with a full-fledged sweep. I mean, I know that this Razorback baseball team is good. You know this Razorback baseball team is good. The American people know that this Razorback baseball team is good. But when you're talking about going out there and sweeping the defending champs in LSU Tigers... That, my friends, is incredible. And it wasn't just the fact that you beat them, but how you beat them. We talked on Friday about the game itself, after thir- or talked on Friday about Thursday's game and winning game one. It's a thrilling game. Arkansas took care of business. But when you walk it off the way that Arkansas did that day, oh, man, that, that is sweet. Extra innings. Uh, it, it, you just had a battle between two really good teams, really good baseball teams. And I even tweeted it out, but it still remains the same and still the same realm that you have, when you have two good teams, great teams like that going up against it, it's usually the team that blinks first that loses those games. Because if you have two great teams, a great team's always going to take advantage. And Arkansas did where that poor shortstop for LSU, uh, it, I won't call it a routine because it's something that I couldn't do, but it seemed like a pretty standard ball that got hit to the shortstop to be able to make a routine throw over to first base for the out and it just went under him it bounced and went under him and man if baseball doesn't show you how stressful it is because of that play when you have Hudson White coming up he knocks it he scores them all the way from first they walk it off and throw so many other sports too but it was it was thrilling, man. I, I loved it. Uh, how about my boy Peyton Stovall just killing it? It's almost like that game in series meant a little bit more to him for some reason. It's almost like he's from the state of Louisiana. Uh, but he had a phenomenal performance, too, uh, in Arkansas. Came from behind, actually, in game three against the Tigers. A lot of home runs got hit by LSU, but they're all solo shots. So uh, it was something where he had to battle through. He had to, tend to make it work. He got the right runs, and... I was hoping to see a little bit more out of Hunter Dietz. Everyone was excited to see him uh, when he finally got to go out. He's the highly cut of a kid coming out of high school and uh, didn't didn't go very well for him. But people, I also heard, maybe it was the broadcast team, but they were like, oh, I don't know about putting a kid that's so young and never been in this situation before in this position against LSU. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's exactly what I want to see. And I think Dave Van Horn was the same way. He's like, I want to see what this kid's made of and what bigger position is going to be to where it's not like make or break for the series, but it's, hey, go out there and against a really good team in LSU, see what happens. Well, they start hitting on him, and Big Mac, Bill Will McIntyre comes in and just does his thing. Love having him around. Like, he's not a starter, but the fact that you can bring him in as a utility guy, a right-hander who just throws just some nasty stuff that is very difficult to hit up against, that, my friends, is is truly magical and truly special. So, uh, but again, great, great performance of Arkansas. And anytime you get the sweep against an uh, SEC opponent, it's always big. But when you're talking about that SEC opponent, uh, it's always huge too. Also, uh, I think I always like playing Dave Van Horn's speeches after the games because I I just love hearing from him. He's he's not a guy who's big on social media. He's not putting on this face or masking himself and saying like, oh, okay, make sure you get the camera on me, make it look this way, make me sound good. Like, this is just him, man. And so hearing these speeches after the games are always fun. Take a listen. Good job today, down four to one, something like that. You guys fought back. I think we got four hits with two outs with a walk. Big time inning. Those are fun. It's hard to get like four hits with one inning. You guys deserve to win this game. I felt like we pitched really well. We made just about every play. Played like flawless defense for three days. Congratulations. You know, I'm excited about the sweep, but we still have.
have 21 more to go, right? Yeah, enjoy it tonight. Relax, think about it. Start moving on. It'll be Tuesday night before you know it. Great job. Really fun week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh. So there you have it. Just hearing from Dave and just the cool, calm, collected guy who just goes out there and says, hey, you guys did a great job. Always feels good to sweep. Flawless defense. Did a lot of great things, but uh, enjoy it, but move on. We're, we're going to be moving on. Got 21 of these games left to go. But uh, just, again, a stellar performance by Arkansas and, and coaching job by Dave Van Horn. And I mean, how can you not love the guy? And his management of his team and being able to have the confidence in his pitching staff to just do the things that they're doing and be consistent about it too has also been really fun to watch. Uh, you know, we, we talk about in football where, you know, Bobby Trino and the offense has kind of set it. Like they've been basically like, Hey, this is the way we're doing it. This is our quarterback. This is how it's set. And that gives you confidence because suddenly you feel, Ooh, okay. Well, if they're, if he, if a great coach is that confident where he has it set and he doesn't need any competition going on in other spots, he must at least like what he's got or everyone else is just so terrible, but let's look at the positive side. It's more about having guys and players that you want looking good, feeling good, confident in them. Let's go with it. So that's really how I feel in offense and Arkansas and Bobby Petrino, but also with Dave Van Horn. He did mix up the pitching, the starting pitching a little bit with Tiger and Molina, but he's not talking about major mix-ups of, okay, well, we're going to completely revamp this whole thing. And same thing with the lineup, same thing. There's been some a little adjustments here and there, but it's not because of, oh, gosh, we got to figure out this problem that we have. It's more like, oh, gosh, we have so much freaking talent we got to figure out who's going to set themselves apart from the others. Pitching is great. Hopefully, if everyone stays healthy, knock on wood, this pitching staff is good enough to win it all. And the offense has its moments. Still don't like as many players being left on base in scoring position as sometimes Arkansas does. However, it's an offense that is still perfectly capable of making big plays and big swings and getting some runs there on the board. The margin for error is so insane, though. Like, folks, do you realize Arkansas beat Auburn in a series 2-1, lost game three, but they are this close to being swept by Auburn? I mean, this close. They won game one, one to nothing because of a solo shot by Alloy in the first inning. You know how insane that is to be able to hold no team score, neither team scores for eight straight innings, and you win because of a home run that was hit? In the first inning, this close to losing that. And then we all know what happened in game two. Also this close to losing it. You win both by one run, and you're that close to having a completely different series, and it goes the same thing against LSU. Game one, you won pretty handedly, or not handedly, but you you hit that three-run bomb there by Kendall Diggs, set yourself apart. But in game two, you needed a walk-off, man. You needed a walk-off fashion this close. And even on Saturday's game, this close to losing it. So great teams always come through in the clutch. And Arkansas definitely did. Still the unanimous number one team in the country. Still have plenty of things to still prove about themselves because you know, they, they, I'm not, I'm not going to put any guarantees on it. they got plenty of work to do. But I would say that with Arkansas right now, they've – Won two really tough SEC series. Missouri is a joke, so I'm not going to count that one. But you got Ole Miss coming to town this weekend. Now the Thursday through Saturday series, you got the game against Arkansas State tomorrow night in Baum Walker. So another one of those weird deals where quick turnarounds happen. So we'll see how Dave Van Horn manages that. But if you continue to play as well as you're playing right now, I'm not going to say they're going to win all 10 SEC series. I refuse to do that. However... There's no reason to think that there's any series left on this schedule that they can't win. They're really good. They're really fun. And I hope they stay this way. I hope it stays fun for all of us. And for you Razorback fans, for all that is holy, you have needed some good news. You've needed some good vibes. It hasn't really done any favors for you this academic year. I mean, you know, we're going to hear from our interns here in a little bit, but I can't imagine how the interns have felt about this school year and how bad it's been. You know? And my seven and a half years, by golly, I got some good years. Got to see McFadden in his final year in football. Got to see the Petrino years. 
got to see uh, at least an NCAA tournament appearance by Arkansas. That was about it, though. But in baseball, I got to see three World Series, 09, 12, and 15. Yes, I was in school that long. So I can appreciate it. But students in your time, like I can imagine a kid who like started <laughs> – can you imagine a kid that started his freshman year, Brett Beam was last year, went four and eight, and then two and ten, two and ten with the Morris years, and then COVID hit. <laughs> you know, like had to do that football season. Oh boy. Yeah, not not jealous and not envious of anybody with that. That's pretty, pretty disgusting and pretty terrible. But hopefully uh, there's gonna be some sort of good news happening for everybody, not just students, but everybody here in the state of Arkansas. We'll get to your Arkansas update here in just a little bit. And uh, some other things, too. But I want to tell you all about our friends over at Alumni Hall here in Arkansas. Now, you're going to go to these games, right? You're going to be going to these baseball events, uh, wearing your Razorback attire and getting all fired up and ready. Well, here's the thing. If you're going to go there, that's great. And you probably have some Razorback shirts or some attire. But don't go in there with some ratty stuff. Don't go in there with the the same Razorback baseball t-shirt that you've been wearing since day uh, Norm DeBryan was the head coach. You know, you, you need to up your game a little bit. You want to be up in style and alumni hall has everything you need because not only do they have baseball hats as well as jerseys and everything for the baseball season. Uh, but they also have polo shirts. If you like to go golfing or just like to, you know, look a little business casual, they got the polo shirts. And the thing about it is it's also the nicest brands. You're talking about Southern tide, Columbia, Peter Millar, Johnny O, they have it all. And for men, women, children, pets, the house, you can you can make the ent entire house be decorated in Razorback attire, and it's all available over at Alumni Hall. So go to the website at www.nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall. That's nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall. You can check out their entire inventory and their entire catalog of everything they have to offer you from all the Razorback gear, and you can have it delivered straight to your door. If you can't make it to their location off College Avenue here in Fayetteville, just have it delivered, do it on your terms and on your time, and get ready for the weekend against Ole Miss and that Razorback game there in Baumwalker Stadium by getting the best of all attire from Alumni Hall. We will take another break. When we come back, we'll continue on with the John Neighbor Show, get to more of your comments, as well as your Arkansas update coming up next, so stay with us. We're not done yet either, so don't be satisfied because we're not done. I mean, honestly, I don't really remember – Post game, I guess I black out after games, winning and losing. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Just tell me you missed it. I'm not going to go there with you. Why not? And that will be the last question I answer with that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. That is why Arkansas is fantastic. Yes, sir. You know, and, and I like, you know, I didn't like the game, but I'm glad I was able to walk off the floor again and deep inside and have that funny feeling that, hey, one more time, Horn. Best guys, uh, I know it's a tough time for you. Uh, the coach is gone, but you got a new coach now, and you got to listen to what he says. Okay, I know you're thinking, oh, who is this new guy? Where's the other guy that crashed the motorcycle? We like him better. He was cool or whatever. Forget about all that. Listen to the new coach and get out there and win some games. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. You guys act like it's... Pick it up a little bit. Okay? Get your chin up. Smile. Smile. Okay? Dang, you guys all right? If not, I'm not talking. I'm so excited. Big red. Oh, oh. Guys, I've got just one thing I want to say to you. Touchdown, Arkansas! I was a teacher today. Told those boys. Welcome to the SEC. Well, Fayetteville is 1,843 miles away, but the call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco. Let's take my dick in the mashed potato. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put it back in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbor Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios. <laughs> 
All right, welcome back into the John Neighbor Show here live from the Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate each and every one of you listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas as I'm your host, John Neighbors, and also appreciate you for making us a part of your afternoon this afternoon as uh, still got plenty of things to uh, discuss. We've been talking Razorback football, Razorback baseball, and tomorrow we are going to be at spring scrimmage for the Razorbacks. Uh, we get a chance to see them again in the morning. And the coolest thing about it, folks, guess what? We get to hear from Bobby Petrino tomorrow. That's right. Old BMFP. That guy is going to be out there living life, and I'm sure it's going to be a great press conference. And I, I actually mean that in a, in a way of, like, I'm interested to hear from him. We haven't heard from him since he's been introduced as coach. So I'm sure it'll be a very populated press conference. But... I, I just wonder how is he going to handle it? What's he going to say now that he's actually seen the team and been coaching them and getting after people? And, you know, uh, you know what's he, is he just going to be asked about Taylor Green? Like how's, how he's been going? And Bobby's just, no, Taylor's doing a great job. He's doing a great job throwing the ball. He's doing a great job of going out there and really putting it all together for us. So uh, I've been really confident and really happy with his performance. And, you know, he's a good leader. He's a leader of a, of a really good team. And so we, we should be... We should be in a really good position to do some things this year. That's my guess of what it's going to go like. I don't know if it will, but that's my guess. So, uh, But we look forward to hearing from old Bobby. I would love to get him here at the United States Sports Studios, but for some reason, he's a tough guy to get a hold of, a.k.a. he doesn't like doing things like that. So, like, I don't know. Maybe one day we'll trick him. We'll get him in here. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll make that work, and we'll keep you all updated on it as well. But I know we got a few things to talk about in your Arkansas update presented by Davis and Garrett Insurance, your independent auto owners insurance agency, securing what matters the most. And for your Arkansas update, we mentioned the Razorback baseball team sweeping the LSU Tigers. I mean, is there a better team to sweep in the SEC than LSU? I mean, think about it. The defending champs, old Tommy Tanks, which, man, that guy's a big boy. Um, but yeah, that was great, man. Just and in the and the crowd was electric. I think on was it Friday? I think it was Friday's game that was the most attended game of the season. Over eleven thousand people there. Uh, really, really good showing by Razorback fans, and that's I'm not surprised by that by any stretch. But uh, it's still really good, uh, really good showing for there. So they they took care of business, and also for uh, Razorback basketball fans, this happened on Friday, and. Scotty and Curtis took care of the pot at the palace and did a live stream for it too. But how about Eric Musselman and the Hogs getting Josh Cohen, the transfer forward from UMass, 6'10, 220 pounds, and is able to provide some scoring where he was first team All Atlantic 10 selection for the Minutemen, which I still laugh every time I hear the UMass Minutemen. Like, man, what an intimidating mascot. But UMass, back when Calipari was there, they were pretty nasty there. So. He was there. He averaged 16 points a game, seven rebounds a game, nearly two assists per game, shot 54.5% from the field, and also had career highs of 35% from three-point land and 70% at the charity stripe. I do not mean to be a jerk, but I am going to be a jerk. I can't help but think that every single time I see a player's three-point percentage at their previous spot and they're transferring to Arkansas, I automatically think it's just going to get worse because <laughs> I don't know of any player – uh, that's transferred into Arkansas where their three-point percentage increased or at least stayed close to the same. It seems like it's a pretty significant change. Sometimes they didn't have any players that transferred in that were good at three-point three-pointers at all. But percentage-wise, it's extremely frustrating. And you know what I'm thinking about? It. I think Caleb Battle may have actually got either close or surpassed it. So maybe I think Battle might have been the exception to the rule. But it wasn't until later in the year uh, that that was actually being put together. But yeah, that was that was a that's a nice get for Eric Musselman. And for all that is holy, it's great to hear that. That's that's it. That's that's all that was being said. That's all that's done. He's staying staying on board. Uh, that's that's what we want. That's what we want to see. And I'm all here for it because surely nobody wanted Eric Musselman to leave, right? Surely not. I didn't. But it was uh, it was good to see that finally come to fruition and Arkansas finally get uh, him back into the mix. And we can move forward, right? Right? 
Eric Musselman? Right? Right. Right. So we uh we love uh we love being able to see that. So okay, now I'm gonna play this. This is just off the complete cuff, folks. This is completely off the cuff because it just got sent to me here from uh on social media. So bear with me. As it looks as if is it true? I think it is. I think that you finally that we finally got a chance to hear from Hunter Yurchek about last week's video that he posted. You know, the one that was like uh, the, the must bus thing. So I'm, I'm going to we're, we're going to get into this. Let's let's dive into this. And I want to give credit where credit is due as um, it looks like the one star recruits podcast had uh, Hunter your check on. So uh, I want to be able to play this and hopefully it'll actually uh, come through here too. So yeah, we may have to, I'll, uh, oh, I think I got this. Hold on. I think I got this. Yeah, here we go. So uh, let's hear from Hunter Yurichek. All right. This is according to the One Stars podcast. Let's see and hear if he, uh, if he has something to say about it. You guys are exactly right. That was a video that was recorded a few years ago. There, that video was probably 30 or 40 seconds in length. And we edited that down. I had our communication staff edit that down. Um, as you guys alluded to, Coach Musselbin, much to his success has been rumored for multiple jobs uh, that have been open here in this off season. Um, and he's still the basketball coach as we sit here today and record uh, this podcast at the university of Arkansas. Um, he has been well taken care of in his, his past contracts or where he's had a couple of extensions in the past few years and six figure increases. Um, there's not, there's not a new contract in place for him this year. Um, but that, that video was just to kind of dispel some of the rumors that, hey, he's still our basketball coach. Now, this may change tomorrow. You'll have to ask Coach Musselman that. But uh, we very much want him to be an Arkansas Razorback. Uh, we feel like where his contract currently sits, he's compensated in the top 12 to 15 coaches um, in the country. He's earned that compensation and done a great job. And uh, that video was nothing more than that. athletic director trying to have a little bit of fun with some fan bases and naysayers that saying, hey, Coach Musselman's leaving. Well, he may be leaving, but right now he's still here and he's still a basketball coach and he's still driving the bus. I like that, Hunter. Having a little fun on social media. Why not? Did did Musk know you were posting the video, or is that is that your sense of humor coming across? Uh, that that is my sense of humor coming across. That was not something that was a coordinated or collaborated effort between uh, myself and Coach Musselman. and my communications team did a great job, kind of cutting, splicing that video together from a previous uh, video we had put out a few years ago, and uh, just kind of reuse that uh, as we headed into the Easter weekend. All right. You heard it right there. Hunter Yurchek addressed the video from last week that was put out there by himself from the previous year, uh, previous two years, two years ago. So what it looks like is that Yurchek wanted to have some fun with, as he called them, the naysayers and the uh, haters or whatever, talking about him leaving and whatnot. And so he just put it out there. And let everybody know. Nah, as of right now, <laughs> he's our coach. He may leave one day, but right now he's our head coach. And so I, I really wanted to, uh, I really wanted to put it out there and mess with him a little bit. So, ah, does that make it better? I don't know. I don't know if it makes it better, but does it make it? Does it make it fine? I don't know. Like. I like your check. I really do. And, and hearing him address it and him having some fun with it, that's kind of on brand for him as the AD of Arkansas, where he does like to kind of take shots at some of the haters or some of the people that are bringing up stuff that's not true. So I, I had I had no doubt that the approach by Hunter Yurichek in that was based in something like that. But then... I like the follow up and saying, "Hey, you know, Musk knew nothing about it." He's like, "No, no, no, Musk knew nothing about it. I just wanted to do it for my own, my own sake and everything." Okay, but dude, <laughs> read the room. People are on eggshells right now. Those are Razorback fans, and so when he put that video out, myself and everybody was like, "Okay, good. Woo, it's done. Good. He's coming back. No problems." But then suddenly Musk 
I guess was asked about it by some reporters and some coaches stuff. They're like, uh, we have no idea what that means. Now, does that mean that like, oh, we're trying to leave and we have not agreed to anything. So I don't know why he's putting it out. I don't think that that's what they were trying to portray. I think it was more portraying of, yeah, we have no idea what it means. We're here. We're still going to be here, but we don't know what that means. Like when we don't know why you'd put it out. I'm just trying to put all of it together. And that's what it sounded like to me. Your check was trying to have some fun, but not really understanding that Musk was going to be followed up and asked about it. And then when he was like, I don't know what that means because we're still status quo. Then people ran with it of like, oh, there's a disconnect between Hunter Yurchek and Eric Musselman. I don't know if that's the case. And I don't think there's reason to believe that's the case, at least not at this point in time. But again, know your audience. Read the room, Mr. Yurchek. This may come as quite a shock to some of you, but Razorback fans are stupidly crazy. And they hang on every word, on every phrase, every time. They do not forget. Ever. I mean, I cannot tell you the most random stupid stuff that I remember when people were mad and frustrated. Like the, the amount, Every single time I think of Houston Nutt and hear that uh, that was a call play, and I called it Chuck. That was a radio interview after they beat Mississippi State in 2005. But everyone remembers it because they didn't like it. They didn't like the way it was portrayed. They didn't like what was said. They were upset with the current state of things, and so they held on to it. I'm not putting that like that quote from Hunter Yurchek on this level, but he's got to understand. I think he does. Hopefully he does, but he's got to understand that you can never, ever, ever toy with the emotions in the minds of Razorback fans. Because if it's like it's like playing in a pool of gasoline with matches. There's nothing good that can come from it. <laughs> you can you can have fun. There ain't nothing good that's ever going to come from that. So, but I'm glad that he was able to address it and good on one star recruits podcast uh for uh asking him about it and discussing it and and getting into it. So appreciate that. Let's see. I love this from Yancey. Says it's April Fool's Day, John. Be careful believing it. Trust me, I know. But when I saw the video, and I, I didn't even that was me watching in real time for the first time, too. I, I was like, okay, well, if this is a troll job or if this is weak or something, then okay. We'll just have some fun with it on on this on this show. But it wasn't. It looked like it was legit, even though somebody, I guess Tiffany said it looks like AI. Now that would be that would be next level dedication if somebody was making AI of Hunter Year ejected being a podcast. Like, don't you have bigger fish to fry in the AI community than getting on? Let's get Hunter Yurchek in there. Let's have him talk about stuff. Um, Miss Lisa is still fired up. She says, I really don't care if he comes back or not. There's just too much drama. Um, I'll, I'll agree that there has been too much drama, Miss Lisa. I will agree with that. Which, by the way, Miss Lisa, you need to call in. You used to call in on my show. You need to call in. I need to hear from you. You got the phone number, 936-246-2889. Give us a call on that. I want to hear your voice, and I want to hear you say it too. Uh, Dalton says, it sounds like he's pessimistically optimistic. It's a lot of words, but I know what they mean, I think. So, yeah, it's that's kind of what it's like. We're just like, hey, he's the coach. Not right now, but not, you know, maybe he, may, he may leave, but right now he's the coach. It's like I, I, he's, he's doing AD talk. He was doing some politicking. He's doing some politicking there. So I don't blame him for it. Uh, let's see. Tucker says, this is not a good look, right? Well, it ain't a bad look. I don't know. I don't care. Like, I'm just more of the point of must is staying, right? Right. Okay, good. Moving on. Let's get better. Let's let's do that. Because I've heard two folks that, not surprisingly, Eric Musselman and his staff are taking extra, extremely extra caution and precautionary measures of vetting players out of the portal, not just skill set wise, but personality and coachability. They've always done it to a certain extent, but after this last year, the disaster, they are going to make sure it doesn't happen again. So they are going above and beyond, above and beyond to make sure that that doesn't happen again. So take that for what it's worth. Miss Lisa, even though I'd rather a call in, but she still is commenting. Frank told Houston he, if he got on that tarmac, he was fired. Houston got off the plane and turned back around to Fayetteville. Yeah, I guess it was when he was in the Nebraska job. That was such a weird time. 
Like I've never. That's another thing. I like if you listen to me, you know I don't like Houston Nut at all. Never have. Never will. But I remember that guy. And it was probably more Jimmy Sexton. But I remember the Nebraska fiasco. He was like, like Danny Nutt called Peyton Hillis and like told him, "Hey, we're going to Nebraska. We want you to come with us." And they didn't. And then there was a little bit of that rumor for the LSU job, which was a joke. But the biggest joke was when Houston Nutt had to make a statement and be like, I have no interest in the Dallas Cowboys job. I'm like, well, yeah, well, yeah nobody had any interest in you, my man. So uh, hey, whatever you got to do to hype yourself up, that's, that's just the case. And Tucker says, this makes it look even more like Hunter Yurchek does not have a firm grip on the athletic department or his relationship with Musk. I'm not going to go to that extent. I'm not going to go that far. Um. Because I, I think that sometimes you, you swing and miss on social media posts. Like, folks, if I, I'm in the content creation business. You know how many times I've swung and miss on tweets that I think are hysterical or I think are really creative and funny and nobody laughs or nobody cares? Like, it happens. Sometimes you miss. It's just part of it. And I think maybe your chick just missed on this one. doesn't mean that it's a direct portrayal of the relationship or the deteriorating relationship of Muss and your check in the athletic department. I don't think that at all. But sometimes you swing, sometimes you miss. Got to get better next time. And I think that that's all it was, at least at this point in time. At least at this point in time. That's all it was here. So I just don't, I don't know. I don't like to make too big of a deal out of something like a tweet in a video. I like to talk about it, but I don't want to get crazy with it either. Man, that's fun. Thank you for that clip, One Star Podcast. That's a good one. Glad I got addressed. Got got, glad it got figured out and that we can move forward from it and all heal from this insane process that uh, was so tough for so many Razorback fans to deal with. But, folks, I got to tell you about Autograph, one of our newest and favorite sponsors here on the John Neighbor Show as well as the United States Sports. Tom Brady co-founded this Incredible app with one mission in mind, change the fan experience for the better. It's a fandom rewarded app that allows devoted fans like yourselves, like you crazy, ridiculous Razorback fans. It allows you to unlock the most memorable experiences as well as rewards. When you go on there, you get to see all the different sports content that can be catered to you as a Razorback fan, whether it's great content from us here at Natty State Sports that's being published on there or some of our great podcasts that are being published on there. If you download the app today and use the promo code Natty in ATTY, you'll be able to start leveling up with some flex worthy rewards. Rumor has it they're going to be even involving themselves in giving away Razorback baseball tickets for games this year, which is a hot commodity, mind you, and a pretty intense thing to try to find tickets that are affordable. They're going to be giving them away. So download the app today and use code Natty in ATTY. Download the autograph app, use promo code Natty. Or visit the website link.ag.fan slash natty. No matter what it is, level up your fandom experience with the Autograph app. Uh, one of the great sponsors here at Natty State Sports. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get to uh, some of your comments, maybe some of your phone calls, as well as some of the other crazinesses going on in the sports world. So stay with us here on the John Neighbor Show live from Natty State Sports Studios. We not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we not done. I mean, honestly, I don't really remember... Post game, I guess I black out after games, winning and losing. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Just tell me you missed it. I'm not going to go there with you, Dave. Why not? And that will be the last question I answer with that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. That is why Arkansas is fantastic. Yes, sir. You know, and, and I like, you know, I didn't like the game, but I'm glad I was able to walk off the floor again and deep inside and have that funny feeling that, hey, one more time, Horn. Best guys, uh, I know it's a tough time for you. Uh, the coach is gone, but you got a new coach now, and you got to listen to what he says. Okay, I know you're thinking, oh, who is this new guy? Where's the other guy that crashed the motorcycle? We like him better. He was cool or whatever. Forget about all that. Listen to the new coach and get out there and win some games. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. You guys act like it's... Pick it up a little bit. Okay? Get your chin up. Smile. 
Smile. Okay? Dang, you guys all right? If not, I'm not talking. I'm so excited. Big red. Oh, oh. Guys, I've got just one thing I want to say to you. Touchdown, Arkansas! I was a teacher today. Told those boys, welcome to the SEC. Fayetteville is 1,843 miles away, but the call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco. Let's take my dick in the mashed potato. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbors Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios. All right, welcome back into the John Neighbor Show here live from United States Sports Studios. Appreciate everybody listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. As uh, here after a while, we'll have a, hey, y'all see this as part of our uh, fun show that we'll go through some other headlines and some craziness too. But uh, I did want to uh, reiterate a few things, folks, uh, here at United States Sports is that uh, we will have a winner, hopefully from the NCAA Tournament Bracket Challenge of Natty State Sports. We have a clubhouse leader, but I ain't giving credit until credit is due because we still got three games technically left. Uh, so we'll make that announcement, and we'll try to track down in some capacity of who actually ended up winning and get to that point. But uh, we'll do that as well as I uh, want to remind everybody, too, that we are doing internships here at Natty State Sports, and we are looking to be bringing on some interns in the late spring and summertime. So some kids are going home, some kids are staying here. And so if you're interested in interning with us here at Natty State Sports, a great work environment, by God, then you go on to nattystatesports.com, scroll to the bottom, you'll see careers. Click that, take it right to the Google Doc to apply for that internship, and uh, you can check it out. And it'll be a great experience, a learning experience of getting you all the – the, the experience of the experienced, experienced guys that we have experience in here in this experienced outlet of Natty State Sports. So just wanted to pass that message along and let everybody know for that. Um, this was a really cool video. I, I love this. So Jake Bates, some of you may have already seen this or maybe you at least know the name. Jake Bates was a kicker at Arkansas and was behind Cam Little back in 2022. And you didn't really see much of Jake Bates because Jake Bates – was behind Cam Little, as I mentioned. Like Cam Little's really good. Well, the UFL has officially started, and this guy is in the UFL, and he kicked a sixty-five, a sixty-four yard field goal to win the game for his UFL team. Uh, now, now ch- take a watch on this because there's some things I want to discuss from it too. So just just watch this. Good snap. Like I mean, just nails it. Michigan versus St. Louis in the UFL. So, uh, okay. I mean, that is impressive. I know it's in a dome, so people are going to bring that up. I don't care. Kicking a 64-yarder with the game on the line, down by one, is huge. And I think it's really cool because he's a former Razorback. But uh, what this video doesn't show is this is actually his uh, second attempt because in the first attempt, he still made it. But a timeout was called to try to ice him. And he still made the second attempt and ended up uh, getting it. So really cool moment there for uh, former Razorback Jake Bates of uh, getting the win and, and all of that. He was on the Pat McAfee show today, which I actually reached out to him about having him on my show. Never heard back from him for some reason. It's almost like he wanted to go on uh, Pat McAfee instead. But just I like to see former Razorbacks uh, be able to do things like this, even if he's only here for one year. But uh, it was great to see that moment and uh, a really, really special thing for him, too. So wanted to go ahead and give a shout out where credit and give a credit where credit is due, because uh, this is about to be something that we're about to talk about that pisses me off. And I really don't want to talk about it, but I have to. I feel I feel inclined. I feel like I need to. But the NCAA tournament is still going on. And the final four is officially set. Now, I'm not going to sit here and talk about my bracket it's garbage but here at the United States sports bracket we did get two of the four final four teams right so that's half the battle really went out on a limb with our two as well like getting UConn and Purdue as uh UConn was able to just I mean they've been ravaging everybody I don't see them losing they just took care of business and you had Purdue beat Tennessee in the elite eight so 
Uh, nice win for them, and I don't, I'm not really a fan of Zach Eady and the way he's officiated. I know it's been a big talk, topic of conversation, but still, I'm not getting my feelings hurt that Tennessee lost. And then the other fi- another Final Four team is the NC State story, man. How cool is that? That's what the NCAA tournament is all about. They're an 11 seed. They would not be in the NCAA tournament if it was not for them winning the ACC tournament. Like, that is insane. And I went back and I saw a highlight to where they had to hit a buzzer beater three against Virginia in the ACC tournament to even, like, to send it to overtime, in which they ended up winning in overtime. And since that point, they have just been on a run in the ACC. Uh, I've, I've loved the story. I, I love from the, from the coach perspective and what he's been able to, to bring and provide. I mean, a place like NC State doesn't get a lot of love, especially in a school, in a state that has already North Carolina and Duke, which get all the love as, as a basketball school. But also, how about DJ Burns? That dude is an absolute unit out there, uh, just making plays and being somebody that's easy to root for and just love it. I love that story. I love the fact that they're in it. I think UConn's still going to win it all, but I'd like to see NC State beat Purdue. I want to see them keep going uh, because it is a cool story. However, the other Final Four team is the Alabama Crimson Tide. First off, congratulations, Alabama, for making your very first Final Four in program history. That is a great feat. It's a great feat. In fact, you only made, I believe, your second Elite Eight ever in history. So you're making history this year. You're kind of like South Carolina was a couple years ago, you know, a program that had no postseason success whatsoever. And you had a miracle year where not only have you been a good team, but you've benefited also from matchups, which is huge. Not blaming you for it. I mean, to be honest, I wish I could have played a six-seeded Clemson uh, in the Elite Eight games instead of the number one overall seed Gonzaga or the number or one of the great teams and the number one overall pick in, uh, Gonzaga and uh, Duke with – uh, uh, Benchero that was there and also uh, you know the eventual national champions Baylor in the elite I like that would have been nice would have been nice to, to face off against them but uh, still kudos to you you got it done but this is disgusting the fact that Alabama Crimson Tide is in the final four is is trash and, and awful because first off they, they just became a, a baseball or basketball fan base here over the past few years which is sad and Nate Oates is a very unlikable person. I'm still never going to forget the whole Brandon Miller situation ever and how that was handled. So and they're going to be a fan of his. But how, like, what did Alabama do? Who did they sacrifice? Did they sell their soul to the devil? Oh, your you're, you're all-time greatest college football coach to ever exist who won seven national championships decided to retire. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, how about this, Alabama? Here's a final four. For you right off the bat. Who and how did Alabama get this? That's what drives me up a wall. I'm sorry. I feel like there are a lot more deserving and fun and better basketball programs that needed to go to a Final Four other than just the fans that figured out that there was a basketball team at Alabama over the past few years. I'm trolling those Alabama fans, by the way. They they always love me. But still, it's just so frustrating for so many other programs. Like, you think about Kentucky. You know, they've won, what, one NCAA tournament game since 2019? And, you know, they've been putting together some great players and great teams and just not making it to the Final Four for various reasons. But now you have it to where it's like, ah, well, you know, here's why. It's like, if you're a, <laughs> you're a freaking fan of, uh, of Kentucky basketball, you probably want to pull your hair out. Like, dude, and Alabama makes it? Yeah. Alabama, South Carolina, and Auburn, I think, are the last three SEC teams to make it to a Final Four. That's gross. That is extremely morbidly obese. That's nasty. So kudos to them. They ain't getting by UConn, though. There ain't no way. I'm sure that won't come back to bite me at all. UConn's another level. I, I Hurley has done as good of a job as anybody I've ever seen in college basketball history of especially in this day and modern age, not saying it was ever easy to repeat. Don't get me wrong. But when you hear about like Indiana repeating back in the seventies or Duke repeating in the early nineties, even to an extent, Florida repeating in 06 and 07, you know what those teams had? They had players that had been playing together on the same team for two to three years. Even when Arkansas was about to repeat in 94, 95, 
They had the entire core group of players from the previous year. So that's just how it was, and that's what made it so difficult nowadays where you never have the same team year after year. And Kentucky, and UConn just rolled through the NCAA tournament last year, and they're going to roll through it again this year with some new players and some new faces. That is incredible. Hurley's done a phenomenal job. He has to be, at least in my eyes, the best basketball coach in the country right now. And I, I'll admit, I've never been to Stores UConn or Connecticut, Stores to Connecticut, but the fact that they're able to get so many amazing players up there is also pretty fascinating. I was always a big Jim Calhoun fan. He had, I think, four national championships. Hurley's about to get two. I mean, for crying out loud, that guy, Kevin Ollie, got one. And they fired him. Like, UConn basketball is going to have all these national championships, and no one really knows why. <laughs> but I give credit where credit is due. I want to keep reiterating that. But yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be them and nobody else. It, UConn and Purdue is the is the national championship everybody wants, and I'd like to see it. But isn't it amazing too that the two Final Four teams that Arkansas played this year in Alabama and Purdue, Arkansas beat one of them and should have beaten the other one if they didn't just blow a complete and total crazy lead. Everything's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'll be okay. Just, I feel sick. But I know what I don't feel sick about. That's superior contracting and development here in Arkansas. Listen, folks, we know so many of you are looking to do some things to your house. Interior or exterior. Maybe you're looking to add a fence. Maybe you're looking at a pool. Maybe a new deck. Maybe you're trying to bust down some walls and make that man cave just a little bit bigger. Well, luckily for you, Superior Contracting and Development can help you out. They're licensed residential and commercial contractors who specialize in all aspects of home building and remodeling. And they handle everything, not only just fencing, but drainage, additions, and remodeling to your existing structure, all the way to land development and ground-up construction. So call them today for all of your interior and exterior construction remodeling needs at 501-453-3053. That's 501-453-3053. You can also email them at contracting at superiorark.com. Uh, check them out that way. Or you can just visit the website at superiorark.com. No matter what it is, though, do it with Superior Contracting and Development. Once again, calling them at 501 453 3053. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we get to other headlines going on in the sports world as well as a hey, did y'all see this? So stay with us here on the John Neighbor Show live from United States Sports Studios. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. I mean, honestly, I don't really remember post game. I guess I black out after games, winning and losing. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Just tell me you missed it. I'm not going to go there with you, Why not? And that will be the last question I answer with that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. That is why Arkansas is fantastic. Yes, sir. You know, and, and I like, you know, I didn't like the game, but I'm glad I was able to walk off the floor again and deep inside and have that funny feeling that, hey, one more time, Horn. Best guys, uh, I know it's a tough time for you. Uh, the coach is gone, but you've got a new coach now, and you got to listen to what he says. Okay, I know you're thinking, oh, who is this new guy? Where's the other guy that crashed the motorcycle? We like him better. He was cool or whatever. Forget about all that. Listen to the new coach and get out there and win some games. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. You guys act like it's... Pick it up a little bit. Okay? Get your chin up. Smile. Smile. Okay? Hey, you guys all right? If not, I'm not talking. Red, so excited. Red. Oh, oh. Guys, I've got just one thing I want to say to you. Touchdown, Arkansas! I was the teacher today. Told those boys, 
Welcome to the SEC. Well, Fayetteville is 1,843 miles away, but the call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco. Let's take my dick in the mashed potatoes. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbor Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios. All right, welcome back into the John Neighbor Show here live from United States Sports Studios. Appreciate everybody listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas as we'll have uh, a few things to dive into as well as uh, some of the craziness that's been going on with Razorback fans. Man, I, I even looked at social media, um, but people are not very happy. It seems like Razorback fans with the uh, Hunter Yurchek explanation of the video that he did. So, because so someone pointed out, I was like, this video, he said that this video was there to dispel some of the rumors, but then he also said there's not a new contract in place. He may be leaving right now, but he's not here. And this was not a coordinated or a collaborative thing with Muss. So I'm like, okay. I, can you really say you dispelled some of the rumors <laughs> when you kind of just cause more where you're like, yeah, well, you know, I, I was dispelling the rumors, but no, there's no contract in place. Nope, no, nope, nope. He didn't know anything about it. He's the coach now. I mean, it'll be later, but he's going to be, he's the coach now. So I'm not a fan of that. I'm not big on that. And that is just an absurd thing that you could have done. I'm starting to like really change my mind on that. I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Not a fan. Shouldn't have done it. You're a check. Shouldn't have done it. Raise your back. Fans are mad. Not that you care. I don't know if he cares one about that, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'm over it. Just like some of you are. Uh, some of your comments though, before we get to some of the other, uh, again, ones I can read. Um, Bobby's over here saying, dear, my kids, please don't let me call into a show to call. Don't let me call to show us after the age of 58. I don't know what that, I don't know exactly what you're saying. If you're saying calling into this show after the age of 58, then why not? That's what all the cool kids do anyways. We did have a call last week for one of our YouTube watchers, and that was fun. Again, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not doing this to where I say I need callers. Just people were asking about having a call-in show. It was like, all right, well, if you guys want that, and do it that way. So, but some of you just like being in the chat, being anonymous and trolling. I respect it. I do respect it, though. Uh, let's see. I wanted to bring this up, too. This was funny. Again, funny to me. And it'd be funny to you, but it was funny to me. And how this the NCAA tournament has been fine. But how about this in the women's side of things? You had a three-point line that's different on one end to the other. There was games being played this way. In fact, if uh, you look at it, they ever having to measure it just to make sure and this was a great tweet. It says, uh, in the Stanford North uh, NC State game for women's basketball, the team shot three of 20 from three on one side of the floor and nine from 22 on the other side of the floor. Any direct correlation? I don't know. But see, they were having to, having to change up the lines here. I mean, look at this. You're having them measure it with their feet. They're like, wait a minute, something's off here. Because look, you can tell by the gap. You can tell by the gap that, hey, something's wrong here. So let's get out here and measure. And they're like, ah, uh, yeah, this doesn't look right. I know mistakes happen. We all make mistakes. But how in the world do you allow something like this to happen in an NCAA sanctioned game? Like, look at this. Again, I know it, mistakes happen, but you're talking about the very basic thing of a three-point line, and it wasn't even close. So the NCAA put out a statement about it, but I'm just like, dude, that's a bad look. Speaking of bad looks, that's a bad look for the NCAA. It's a bad look for, for everything involved. So just stupid. I guess the women's final four is, is happening here sooner. The, it's this battle of thing where, you know, 
I know the women's game has been doing a lot better than what it has previously. I think Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and all those personalities, they really add into it. But I'm kind of tired of the propaganda machine that gets thrown in because people got to remember, yes, the ratings are as good as they've ever been for women's. But these people that come out and say that, oh, the women's NCAA tournament is more popular than the men's. I'm like, it is not. Let's just be real. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm not trying to cause any issues. I am happy that the women's game has grown. In fact, I've, I've watched some women's basketball here in this NCAA tournament. I think that the personalities of Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese have been huge and great for the game. But I, I know like, you got to realize what you're doing here, folks, too. Who plays the NCAA tournament men's games? CBS, right? Turner? Yeah. And who plays the women's? ESPN. Both of those have exclusive rights. So, of course, ESPN is going to promote women's basketball and in the college game and in their tournament more so than anything because they have the rights to it. They want to pump it up. But I just feel like, can we just have it to where it grows organically and we don't have to have these constant, like, jabs going back and forth? People are just like, oh, well, you know, the, the, women, the men's game is not near as entertaining as the women's. Stop. Just let it, just let people, can people just be fans of both? It doesn't have to be this trash-talking conspiracy crap that everyone wants to bring up and say, well, you know, the women's is it's more entertaining. Okay, to you maybe, but not to everybody. And then, you know, getting it turned out of, you know, oh, well, people are hating on Angel Reese or hating on L LSU or hating on Kim Mulkey or whatever because they're just jealous or they're sexist or they're racist or whatever. It's like, or maybe people just don't like the way that you act sometimes because there's people that don't like Caitlin Clark for the same reasons. It just seems like it's always this, you either, you either love you, you better love the women's basketball game the entire time. And you better say that it is more entertaining and should be highlighted more than the men's. And if you don't, you're bad. Like, just stop. We can enjoy both at the same time. I like basketball. You know? Yes, the men's game is more popular than the women's. But that's okay because the women's is making tremendous strides and becoming a much bigger deal. And that's awesome. That's all we want to see. But there's no reason to kind of throw... And insults and propagandas and all this stuff around. Just let it be. Let it be the way it needs to be. Let it happen. That's my only point on that. I don't want to get on that because I'm sorry I'm going to get eaten up by some of you folks on the social media machines of uh, saying some things that are wrong, even though I'm, I'm not really that wrong, but still. Uh, all right. So we're getting to some of the other final headlines here on the show. And I guess we can go ahead and jump into, uh, hey, did y'all see this? But I, each time that I've been kind of doing this, you don't want to hear me just talk all the time, but you also want to have other people talking uh, in other cases too. And luckily for us, we got some great interns that are hanging out with us as uh, we have intern Will and intern Parker. That's here. Fellas, what's up? Not much, John. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing lovely. Thank you. I, I'm real. I'm really killing it over here. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing awesome. So, uh, but I know that uh, we wanted to get into some of the things that you guys were putting out there for, uh, Hey, did y'all see this? And some of the stories. So I'm going to give you this opportunity. You can crack the mic. You can be on the show. You can be a part of it. Um, and we'll start with you, Will. What's what's your article that you wanted to, to bring up for today? So Tennessee fires their Lady Vols head coach basketball after five seasons, and she just made the NCAA tournament. But did she do anything in it? It's like the expectation that's so high for the for Tennessee women's basketball program. Because of... Yeah, I mean Pat it's Summit. yeah, I mean it's Pat Summit. It's the same. It'll be the same thing. Whoever takes over for Gino Oriyama over at UConn, it's gonna be the same thing. It's like you you, you build, um, you create a monster, you gotta feed it. It's gonna be the same thing with Nick Saban at Alabama. Um, I, I'm surprised that they made it five seasons. Just to be honest, but, yeah. Uh, I mean LSU. I guess South Carolina is still the creme de la creme of the NC of women's basketball. I don't think that's changing. Sometimes that gets forgotten. Everyone talks about Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Like South Carolina, I don't think, has lost yet. <laughs> like they're no, undefeated. they're undefeated. Yeah, they're People don't talk enough about them. But, again, it shows you that there's big personalities that go a long way uh, instead that, that drive the drive the boat there. But, yeah, again, not surprising that's the case. All right, Parker, what do you got? Yeah, so uh, you guys may have seen this on Twitter. Uh, kind of went viral. At somewhere in the Middle East, this guy is driving his FJ on a beach, and mm -hmm. it um, literally takes a bad turn and flips it and goes airborne about 20 feet in the air. So uh, they have beaches and where? Where'd you say it was? It was somewhere. It looked like Middle, Middle East. East or lower, possibly. I think that'd be a fun place to go to do those types of things, dune buggies or whatever. I think it's like the place to be. Really? If you're into like car flipping into water, it seems like the place to be. 
apparently. Well, I'm, I've not ventured into that thing personally <laughs> just yet, but it might be. might be one day. We'll, 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 we can check into that. So, But, uh, okay, Will, what do you got? There's video surfacing of the Chiefs wide receiver R- Rashi Rice leaving the scene of a car accident that he caused. Yeah, uh, I don't know what all details you have on this, but I, I, I read a little bit on it. So what all took place, what all transpired into this as far as like him wrecking it and then leaving the scene? Or at least a scene that he caused, what was it, six cars, I think, were involved? He was street racing his Corvette against someone in a Lamborghini. And both the Corvette and the Lamborghini fled the scene after they wrecked. One of the funniest parts about that is there's a video of a lady at the scene, and they're walking away from the cars, and she goes, they probably stole them. Wow. <laughs> wow. No. <Nah>. Jeez. <laughs> oh, gosh. Wow. Well, here's the thing. I know that it's always been common for people like street racing and driving fast, but it certainly seems like here lately over the past few years, Mm -hmm. it's gotten very apparent and very popular with athletes. I don't know why. Um, You think back to the, was it Henry Ruggs in that situation? Yeah. Yeah, In Vegas, that was awful. awful. And then you think back to also like, again, nothing hopefully and seriously has happened, but like Georgia football, just, they love speeding. Like, they kept having speeding tickets and citations like they were going out of style. So I don't know what has become of it. I don't know why that's the case. I don't know why it's happening. But still, it's it's very strange to me that that continues to be a deal. So, all right, Parker, what you got? Yeah, so uh, Kim Mulkey has responded to the Washington Post article that was published about her uh, saying that she has not read it, which is interesting. Okay. And, um, not the most believable thing ever. Because it was quite the article, if you haven't read it. Yeah, what did it did, what did it say? Like any like what was she? Because she was upset that she like saying was like. Okay, uh, and that it was grilling her for her personality, which they knew nothing about. Okay, well, I don't know. I'm I'm like I I just think stuff like that is like I and I don't have a problem with Kim Mulkey, but. When she approached it that way, I was like, okay, now I'm going to read this article because you're so fed up with it. I can't wait to think about it. And then you get asked about it, and then she's like, I'm not talking about it. It, I don't know. It's a very strange thing. I still, Mm -hmm. I love conspiracies, and I still think the conspiracy that I got going on is that, oh, this is just part of growing the women's game with controversy because no one gets talking more about the women's game than controversy. I don't know if that's actually true, but they certainly have not been lacking that, especially from Kim Mulkey. So, I'm rooting against LSU. Me too. Yeah, I think I think uh, everybody is. I'm not, but I'm not rooting for Iowa either. Like I don't know who I want. Not to a Caitlin Clark yeah. fan. Yeah, I don't. I don't know who I want to win. It's a, it's a lot know. of loud personalities. Yeah, well, it's loud personalities, and it's like you can't just enjoy. Like it goes back to you just can't enjoy it for what it is. You're like, oh, I like this, and then you you know see like, oh, we're more popular, we're better in the men's game. I'm like, okay, and I saw. What was that? I guess Caitlin Clark and like the uh, three on three deal, the big with, three, I, the yes. big three. That's what it was. Yeah, with Ice Cube and people were saying like, oh, she could she could play in, in the men's game. I'm like, guys, what, no. stop, stop, stop! You're not. This is not helping the game. Like, I, this is just the way we are in society. But it's like you can't just let something grow and be enjoyable. It has to be <laughs> no. It's better it's than better. what you like. And if you like the other, you know, you're wrong. It's just better. It's like trash talk that goes with. It's like. You're not going to get people to come over to your side if you're just going to constantly rip and jab something that people really care about, like you know, like with the men's game. Like if you keep taking your jabs and make and trying to say things that just aren't true all the time, you're not going to get people to say, "Man, I can't wait to watch the women's game now." It's going to be like, "No, like I'm now I'm not watching it because you were ripping on the thing I liked." And that's just the way it is, sadly. So, all right, Parker, what else you got? Um, John, that might be it. I okay. think I think our. Um Pretty much last, covered it all. Yeah, I think I think we've got good, it. Good, good. Okay, got that. And uh, there was something else I was going to bring up, but how we're going to sweep Ole Miss this weekend? Yeah, that's yeah. well, that's that's get, you got to play. You got to get through Arkansas State first. Yeah, big big in state matchup. Tough contest. Ah, oh, I I don't I don't mind the midweek games. Mm. I honestly don't mind the Thursday series though. Something special about having Sundays, but then again, it's nice to have a Sunday where you don't have anything going on too. Right. Yeah. So, um. So you guys, because I asked you guys this before, it's April Fool's Day. You never had an April Fool's joke, a prank, nothing like that played? No, I feel like maybe at one point I pulled something on my sister. Yeah. Um, on April Fool's or just in general? On April Fool's. Okay. But no, nothing ever 
no. huge. No. Nothing life altering. Do you have any good ones, John? I don't think on April Fools, other than until my brother, my m- mom died. I was like <laughs> seven, eight. I think that was that's what I did. Yeah, I mean, I put I pulled pranks before, but it never was on April Fool's Day. Because here's the thing about April Fool's Day: it used to be a fine holiday until social media came along. Because now Nothing social is like, believable. Yeah, because yeah. it's like back when you would do pranks pre-social media, it was like stuff you had to put work into to make it believable and to make it to where it was. You know, if it was put saran wrap on the toilet seat, so when your mom went in there, she peed all over herself. You know, stuff like that. Now it's like people can just send out some stupid tweet of something that's completely not true and get everybody fired up. And they're like, ah, April Fool's. It's like, no, it's not. The, nope. it's, it's lost its luster. It's not the same anymore. So hope like the thing is, this holiday is always going to mean well, that's terribleness to me because this is the day I, when I got the notification from ESPN on the app that Bobby Petrino was involved in a motorcycle accident. Happened on this mm-hmm. day 12 years ago. It's always going to be sticking with me forever because i remember i honestly thought it's in 2012 so like obviously social media was still a thing and you know iphones were a thing but i remember getting that notification i was like from the espn app i was like okay well maybe this is just an april fool's joke or maybe it's not confirmed maybe somebody's lying it's like, there's no way body trino got a motorcycle accident i, I mean, was like somebody oh. was lying yeah well yeah somebody yeah, was true. lying just the wrong person not was lying. the person we wanted to be lying. yeah they wanted somebody else to be lying and then, like, I just, I, I remember that day. I was like, man, I feel sorry for that interstate or whatever. They, Bobby's going to have that thing torn up by tomorrow. Because <laughs> that's the type of impression that Bobby had. It's just like, if Bobby was mad about something, it just, you know, you went missing, like, mm-hmm. type of thing. Like, if he didn't like you, you, you were going to end up missing. He just had that presence of him. And then saw him doing the press conference a few days later with the neck brace, the famous one. And, the number one Halloween costume for uh, University of Arkansas students. I can tell you that for that. And it resurfaced Halloween. when we played him in 2020. Oh, yeah. It was great. So it was great. Still I enjoyed very it. very popular. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. I loved it. I loved the, just the, again, the understanding and the funniness of it now. It wasn't funny at the time. And then he's back. Yeah. yeah. I remember the press conference happened, and I was just like, oh, man, Bobby, I feel bad. That poor man. Like I said, there's like, oh, he's so tough, though. Tough going out there. Yeah. His face all messed up. His neck brace saying, hey, I'm not letting anybody come in front of me and my duty as a coach to be on here in the press conference. I'm going to talk to you because I'm tough. I'm going to show my team. sun in my eyes. Yeah, sun, yeah. In, sun in his eyes. Well, yeah, that, that's sun, man. That'll, yeah, that'll that was, do it. And that'll, uh, it's like, yeah, did you have sunglasses? Or did you not have, he said he didn't have a helmet. I was like, well, surely you're wearing sunglasses. I mean, ah, whatever. It's fine. It's Bobby. <laughs> and then it was like, I think the next day is when it was like, well, Bobby was in a motorcycle accident. Um, and he wasn't alone. I was like, oh. Like, and he was with a woman. Oh. That wasn't his wife. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, no. And then going back and seeing, I think it was the Channel 5 uh, broadcast, uh, or one of the news reporters there that had asked him as he was leaving the press conference, like not in front of the microphone, but as he's leaving, he's like, were you alone on the motorcycle? He goes, yep. It's like, oh, no, man, come on. Like, who, who was it? And it was like, oh, this uh, ex-volleyball player, former volleyball player that was on staff. Oh, come on, man. Like, you're, you're killing me. Yeah. You can't. Like, there's nothing. Like, this worst story keeps getting worse and worse. It's like, yes, and he, she was at, he was having an affair with her. Come on. <laughs> come on, man. Jeez. Blow it's after like, blow. I'm, I'm, I'm like, just, like any one of those details, if it could have been left out, he would have been fine. Yep. But, and then it started coming out. He gave her a, I think it was like a $20,000 gift or something like that to, as part of it. He interviewed a hundred different people for that position and he hired her, but he had a prior relationship with her. And so therefore it was a massive problem because he had hired a woman he was having an affair with that the university then could be sued for by the other people who applied and didn't get the job because of that reason. So, and then Jeff Long was here, <laughs> just like, it was all bad. It's all bad. And I just, I still couldn't believe it. They fired him. I saw Jeff Long moved back to Northwest Arkansas. I don't know. How yeah. True he's hanging out is. here. His, uh, his daughter is actually on the Razorback media beat. Wow. Covering the Razorbacks, ironically enough. And, I remember how irate I was. Like I, I, 
let me put it this way. I remember as a student being there and hearing the news, it sucked. But I was arrogant enough, like many, to be like, okay, well, uh, we'll see who we hire. You know, we'll be fine. We got this great team coming back. You got Tyler Wilson, got Dennis Johnson, got Nile Davis, got Ronnie Wingo, got Chris Gregg, got Kobe Hamilton, got uh, Marquel Wade. Like, we got all these dudes. Travis Swanson on the O-line. Uh, Trey Flowers. It, you know, all these players. We're, we're good. And, but when I felt like it had gotten a little out of hand is when the U of A and the athletic department handed out T-shirts to <laughs> students that read integrity goes a long way and long was bolded and capitalized and i'm like no no this is not something we need to be nope. like celebrating and like being like mm, we stood our ground and we were the moral because here's the thing i don't care what anybody says morals don't win you championships it's true especially during that time of college sports say whatever you want but if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. If you ain't doing some crazy stuff behind the scenes, you know, it just it just seems like it goes hand in hand. So that was a very tough day for Razorback fans and for me, for everybody. I mean, it just sucked. But little did we know that this would come crumbling down the way it did and hasn't been relevant since. Because I honestly thought the Brett Bielema hire was incredible at the time. And the guy had won three straight Big Ten titles yeah. at Wisconsin. It's like, you can do that at Wisconsin. No matter what can you do here at Arkansas? Dude got too arrogant and thought he could just roll in here and win, and you can't. And just, you know, had some issues off the field too. Came crumbling down, and he got fired, and then, like, off the field. Like, this is – it was terrible. Like, it's it's been insane to think that Sam Pittman, which I like Sam Pittman. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean this is an insult to him, but the fact that, like, of the past decade or so, Sam Pittman has been the high point of Razorback football. I mean that nine that twenty twenty one season when they went nine and four was pretty fun. I enjoyed great. it. I mean, other than getting trounced by Georgia on the road, I mean you put you played Bama, you were lost by a touchdown. You know, it was that close. You beat Texas, beat the crap out of Texas in Fayetteville. You finally beat frickin' Texas A and M that year. Smoke Missouri. You beat Mississippi State and was a great game coming down to the wire. You had Traylon Burks, who was so much fun. That was a great year. That was fun. I'm going to the Outback Bowl was fun. I've never yeah. been to that. And Arkansas mm -hmm. never been to that. And Tampa was a cool spot. Tampa was awesome. Yeah. It's a city that's very underrated. It's very underrated. So, all right. Well, that about does it for us. So, uh, intern Will and intern Parker, appreciate it. These guys, and uh, as well as some of our other interns, are going to be doing the intern podcast starting up on Wednesday. We'll give you more details on that. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be great, though. It's going to be a great week, folks. Just remember that. Enjoy yourselves. Stay whatever. Stay natty, if you want to call it that. Just have fun. Don't worry about the Eurochecks video. Don't worry about the nonsense with the football team. Enjoy the week. It's April, new month, Q2, the second quarter. Start having some fun with it. Appreciate each and every one of you listening and watching into the John Neighbor Show. Be sure to like and subscribe to the show uh, all across all social media platforms, especially the United States Sports YouTube page. And we'll keep it going. Same sports show, same sports channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great rest of your night, everybody.